Rabies actually kills more people than the disease polio at around 50,000 people a year. Most of these deaths occur in undeveloped countries, probably because there's a lot more wild animals roaming around. Now, this is why I think it's kind of important to get animals fixed, to kind of control the population so they don't suffer. What do you think about this? Good idea? Bad idea? Now the great news about this illness is they can only get in our system through uh, a weak link, like a injury, broken skin, it can also get in through our eyes, nose, mouth, all these sensitive areas, which, which is why you don't want to touch these areas with your hands because it's easy for stuff to get inside your system that way. There's also been incidences of people like inhaling the virus and getting it, but that's very, very rare. Now the bad news is, is once this virus gets in your system, it causes about as much destruction as a category 5 hurricane with like 156 mile per hour winds. <laughs> The virus pretty much hits a ride in the nervous system and goes to the brain because everything in the nervous system goes to the brain. So that's like a central control thing. Now, once in the brain, the virus pretty much throws a party, starts to reproduce, and have a bunch of kids. And the kids are like, oh, we, wanna, we don't want to stay here. We want to like explore. That's what kids want to do, right? So they hit a ride on their nervous system and go to the glands that control the uh, saliva. And that's how it gets inside some, like an animal's saliva. So when it bites someone, it transports to that person too. Now, of course, once in the brain, it also brings about some problems like inflammation. Big reason why it's on an animal or even a person could start acting all weirdo and psycho because it affects their head. Now, mammals get this disease, not like reptiles, like birds or, or fish. So, for a couple of examples of animals, of course, would be like dogs, famous uh, cats, raccoons. Actually, raccoons are the most common carrier of it. Horses and uh, pigs, too. And it was kind of interesting. I always thought that, like rats carried all of these diseases because I pictured rats with the bubonic plague. But it turns out rats can get rabies, but it's very rare. <laughs> Same thing with like mice and stuff. Now, just like the movie Cujo with Stephen King, the famous movie where the, the dog had, you know, crazy dog had rabies, um, drooling is a, is a very common sign of the illness. Kind of sort of like when our immune system is trying to fight off an illness, it makes our nose run and we cough and stuff because we're trying to, like, get rid of whatever's inside of us. With animals, they do the same thing with foam. So that's why they, they foam a lot. Now, how to tell if an animal is infected is, of course, it'll start acting kind of strange. Drooling is the most common sign, some foam coming out of the mouth. Uh, now, a dog or, say, an animal could be way more way friendly or it could be way aggressive, which is interesting because this is the behavior that helps the virus travel. It's almost like the virus took over the dog's brain or whatever and told it what to do. In humans, can you guess what the most common symptom would be? No, it's not foaming out of the mouth. It's actually a pain in the head area. That's the first indicator of something wrong is happening in your body. It's going to be pain, like a headache. It lasts for days. A person can experience a fever, of course, as the immune system is fighting it off. And also, they can be very tired and fatigued for a long time. Now, similar animals, humans don't foam out of their mouth. Uh, but we, do, we can produce a lot of tears and saliva. And, of course, this can definitely interfere with speech. So someone can have a hard time talking, interfere with uh, the throat area, drinking water, food, and this is all can be kind of scary since, well, someone can't drink or eat very good. Uh, now, apart from these uh, symptoms, there could be also some mental changes and problems too. A person could experience some hallucinations, seeing things, mental confusions, they could be really excited, anxious, or even really, really super happy for whatever reason. Also, the person's not going to be sleeping very well when they're all under this condition. Now, another symptom could be a very strange feeling in the area if, if they were bitten by an, like an animal that had it. it could be like a, like a pingling, burning sensation, even itchiness. So the, the symptoms are kind of similar to animals in that regard. Now, once these signs start appearing, regrettably, it's probably too late because uh, the virus got to the brain area and uh, it's after that, uh, death's probably going to take place. And uh, it's time to start making your peace with whatever God you, you uh, believe in. Now, there is some good news. 
If someone scrubs the infected bite with a whole bunch of like soap and water, it could kill out the virus before it gets in your system. Also, there's a vaccine. Vaccine. That vaccine. That, that's, that's pronounced that right. That's if you if you take it really really quickly, it, it helps a lot. So you definitely want to take that. And lastly, if someone has a super strong immune system, they can help actually kill the virus off too. So that's always a great way. Now, apart from eating great food, drinking lots of water, do all the healthy stuff, there's also a lot of herbal remedies that can really improve someone's health in a big way. And if you are interested in herbal remedies in general and dietary supplements to improve someone's health and really enhance their immune system, what what not. I actually highly recommend a free guide and video uh, course all about supplements, choosing in them and buying them and stuff. Now, the interesting thing about supplements is that in nearly every country, the market is very unregulated. Now, this really means there's not a lot of laws and oversight to really protect consumers and, and people that buy these products. Every year, countless supplements uh, get identified as being harmful and then get recalled for harmful contaminations, mislabeling, and whatnot. Now this guy can really help somebody identify a brand that may be bad and risky and also help someone identify a good brand. It uh, talks about a lot more stuff like herbal remedies in general, what to take for certain uh, conditions and what you want to accomplish in your life. Uh, it talks about herbs you should definitely steer clear of. talks about uh, some online resources and even government agencies and how they really regulate the whole industry, which is fascinating information. The best part about it is it's completely free. <laughs> so you can learn a lot of really great, cool stuff. It's fun in a very short amount of time. You should check it out. All you got to do is simply click on the link right below the video that I made you right here on YouTube. Thank you so much and have a great, awesome rest of your day.